Yeah, I remember way back in the day we had a life group at our house, and I think way back then God probably already had this ordained, uh, but we had a desire to meet, and then we thought about having uh, the youth have a group up our way, but God already had it in the works that he was going to offer us up at church, and what a plan he had for the church. There, that it was because of our kids, and we wanted to have a youth group, and uh, Power Source, I think was the name of the Christ Community Church, and so we had Power Source North. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they'd have uh, a place to plug in and get connected with Christ and each other. So somehow we heard through the community about a really powerful church for the youth. And our kids were at the age they had to be plugged into a church according to Mama Bear here. So we we visited um, the church and boy was it, yeah. It was awesome. She said we're starting a new church on Sunday. It'll be the first service. It's at the, um, yeah, the uh, rehab center, fitness center. And so uh, my husband and I, we were looking for a charismatic type of congregation, small group that would, you know, meet the needs that we were hungry for, for the kind of worship that we were hungry for. And so when Patty invited me, I said, Ken and I showed up the, uh, with Ricky and Brian, I think, the first Sunday. And... Uh, been here ever since. All this was inspired by the by a gathering for the youth. Uh, as we were going forward, we decided that uh, there was had to be some form of formalistic approach to uh, establishing the church. We heard about the small group that was meeting, and they were <coughs> discussing about starting a new church. And when we heard about that, we just had to come and get involved with that. We're in, we got the Wise Market it was on on it was for sale and. Uh, the Lord blessed us when we were in renovating it, and as we went through the uh, different sections of the of the store, and I said, "Oh my goodness, there's there's where the bread of heaven, you know, was the bread section. There's the meat of the word, you know, right where the pulpit and the area. I think that's where the meat and the dairy, the milk of the word, the pure meat, and it was just amazing how." It was just orchestrated. This is, you know, this is the bread of heaven. Yeah, but and, from uh, the foundation of. Um of the church, like when we decided, okay, this is no longer going to be a, a cell group or a home group up here. This is actually going to be the establishment of a church. There was no sitting back. Everybody who was part of that had to use their anointing, their giftings, their equippings, and step out of a comfort zone because we needed Sunday school teachers. We needed, you know, people to set up and tear down because we had to set up and tear down every time we went into the building. So it was all hands on deck. And um, that's kind of what... Um, you know, Hillside, you know, and the Lord wants his church, all hands on deck, everybody giving other giftings, anointings. So the church was rooted in that. It was rooted and established in much prayer. It was rooted and established in much everybody hands on, giftings and quippings. We need you, even if it's outside your comfort zone, jump in because in order for this to go, everybody has to be contributing. So kind of our roots that we established then are still the roots and the direction the Lord's taking us, everybody equipped and ministering as one. If you're starting out as a small church, uh, the health fitness center was nice because there was mirrors on the walls. Yes. So it made your congregation look a lot larger. And the sound, that's when I first started learning sound, and we'd run out of the kitchen. We had that little opening. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes, yes, yes. The congregation, we'd stand in the kitchen and run sound from that. And yes. as, as people are like wheeling tables and chairs in and out each week, that's like running cords and picking up cords and <laughs> setting up the sound each week. So. And I said, well, we're remodeling the building in there. And he asked me a question and said, well, what's, what's going on? Is it going to be a church? Well, who's doing the work? Well, we're all sort of pitching in. There's people that, that have businesses and they know what they're doing. But um, mainly, mainly it's our congregation. He goes, oh, if you guys are able to work together like this and do this, you'll be a strong church. <laughs> and I never yeah. forgot that. I, I knew nothing, still know very little when it comes <laughs> to construction, but like Craig teaching me to like wire the gym and me running conduit and wires and setting up boxes in the gym and I think it's proof of God every time we get to another Sunday and the gym hasn't burned down from an electrical fire. We're <laughs> <laughs> running wires and pulling cable. Where we learned to trust the Lord and that was looking beyond what we could see to what he saw. You know, we picked up in a vision that he had and we just ran with it. You know, no matter what that took to accomplish. Hillside was always not just about Hillside. It was regional. 
a lot of regional youth worships, a regional, just regional. It's, it's, it's Christ in the region locking arms with other churches and, and uh, to bring the kingdom here to this region. So it was always a blessing. Yeah. Praying for other churches, praying for the Lord to bless them and, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, to see that each church in the community had something to offer to the body of Christ, that we were all needed. You know, one church was a hand, one church was a foot, one church was, you know, mm -hmm. the head, one church was the tailbone, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, that we all, we just, that was, we prayed into that for years. Okay. And we needed helpers in there with the children, and, um, and it was so, the Lord had strategically, through prayer, that um, with the, the children being taught in the ways of the Lord, and to this day, here sits James and Rebecca That's and right, Todd, our you, children, Todd. and Todd himself. Yes. Um, that God is using mightily. Yes, He is. And um, so we're just so thankful that the prophecies are being fulfilled. We keep talking about the fitness and health center. Mm -hmm. Then we're talking about the senior center, how we went to the senior center. And then we ended up here at a grocery store. <laughs> and I think there's some significance in in each phase of that as I sit here you know help me out here but I think of the fitness and health center how we started there and to to build us up and to strengthen us into what you know to make us healthy and strong and you know and um, where were we were going and then we moved to the health of the senior, senior center, center make um, and I think it is just to make us, yeah, wise, mature, um, mature and, you know, for our next phase, where then we move to the store where, um, you know, to when you think of a grocery store, it's to for the community to bring, you know, food and nourishment and things to the community. So I don't know if there's some prophetic in each step, but as I sit here and I listen that's what I just kept feeling that I think there's significance in each Very much step so. that we've um, taken. There, there was a word that said this church wouldn't necessarily be a large church it would be a coming and going and so what better way to describe it is a grocery store people were coming and going all the time so our church would be like a church that ministers to people then they're they're um equipped and then they go out and minister mm -hmm. to people. Part that Isaiah 61 was so eminent in when we began the church that this would not just be an ordinary church but it would be a church that would truly set the captives free yeah. and bring healing. It would be a hospital to the sick and the weak and yeah. um, just um, that that scripture just um, continues to ring in my spirit even today that people would come and be healed and be filled with the spirit be the change would fall and they, the captives would be set free to not only be in this area this region but to continue to be the ripple effect the Lord says behold I do a new thing mm -hmm. do you not know it I will make a way in the wilderness and uh, rivers in the desert, and uh, it's exciting to know that we are in that karyos moment. Behold, He is doing a new thing. Every part of our life, in as um, this church, He has done a new thing, and He has done a new thing again. And um, it's a karyos moment, and we're right there, tangible, can taste it. There's such unity in our midst, the same unity almost that we have when we first conceived the church, yes. it was conception. He's taken us back to that unity, which has such an excitement on an anticipation on it, knowing that all hands on deck, God's mm -hmm. directing, we can do anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing's impossible with the vision he set for us. So mm -hmm. behold, he is doing a new thing and he's using us to do it. All those prophetic words from the past, they're still coming mm -hmm. forth, forth. Amen. and being Amen. just reconfirming mm -hmm. our mission Absolutely. and what we're here for. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that God has honored <laughs> us as a church over time is because we've, we've, we've chosen not to become complacent, mm -hmm. you know, and we are attentive to His direction and the way He wants us to go, and we've been obedient in that. Mm -hmm. And even though there's some times where things have tried to, tried to come along to disrupt that, uh, we've been true to the call yes. and true to His word. Word, uh, being true to his word because he's helped us through all these situations mm -hmm. and he strengthened this church over all that time through that and as we continue to move forward uh, we don't think about where we are today we're thinking about where he wants to take us in the mm -hmm. future. Amen.